In this video, we will take a look at the Galilean moons, the four largest moons of Jupiter, Io, Europa, Ganymede, and Callisto. Simulating an observation you can make with a decent amateur telescope and motorized mount. First, let's find Jupiter. With unaided observation or naked eyes, we won't be able to see the moons, even though the largest of them is even larger than our moon. We can simulate use of telescope by zooming in. <laughs> Let's back up a little bit with the zoom. So we are simulating an amateur telescope or telescope similar to what Galileo might have been using. So the vertical field of view here is about one degree and that's about double the size of our moon. I think even at this zoom, you can notice that something is different here. Jupiter and the fainter dots are all in a line. If you pick the right time to observe, you can see all five. And most of the times you can resolve at least the three of them. Uh, two of the moons might be hiding behind the Jupiter sometimes. I think in this view, one of them is hiding behind the Jupiter. Let's see. I guess um, Ganymede must be <laughs> behind one of these. Um, straight lines don't often occur in nature unless they have a reason to be. In this case, the reason here is that those smaller dots are circling around the Jupiter and we are looking at them Aegean. The innermost of the moons, Io, orbit Jupiter quickly enough that you can see it orbit over one night of observation for the right time of the year. Let's uh, simulate observing it for about eight hours on a time lapse. gonna speed up the time oh so i think i need to turn on tracking jupiter so i'm gonna select jupiter and center on that there are motorized mounts that can achieve this in real world observation okay and i'll speed up the time oh um picture is uh, rotating Okay, we don't want that. This is an ideal for what we are looking for here. Um, this uh, has to do with how we track the planet. Right now, Stellarium is uh, simulating an altitude azimuth mount um, with uh, two angle controls adjusting the telescope along these grid lines. But the stars don't move along these grids on most places on Earth. As you can see here, let me advance the time for a bit with the tracking turned off. So, as the altitude of the azimuth mount tries to keep up with the motion of the planet, it introduces a tiny bit of rotation into the viewport. You can actually see this with the moon. Take the first quarter moon, for example. If you are seeing it rising in the eastern sky, you will see the least side farther away from the ground. And when you see it set in the western sky, you will see the least side closer to the ground. So in your telescope tracking the moon, if you try to keep the ground on the consistent side, you will see the moon rotating as you track it. We don't want that. Uh, what we want here is something that tracks the natural apparent motion of the stars as they rotate around an axis going through the celestial poles. As they do that, they follow the equatorial grid. type of the mount that tracks the stars along this grid is called equatorial mount. And there's a setting I can toggle to simulate that. Okay, I think we are now set up to 
now set up for the eight hour observation. Let's uh, back up the time a little bit and then start. So turn off the grid and back up the time to about 10 p.m. the previous night. And okay, let's uh, start the eight hour observation. Um, see which of the moons move the most. You can see that Io has moved noticeably over one night. Uh, you can't quite see it here, so let me zoom in a little bit further. Uh, oh, I think it's hiding behind Jupiter right now. Let me just to make it come out. So Io has moved from one side of Jupiter to the other side. The other moons moved a little bit too, just uh, not quite as much. The farthest moon of the farthest Galilean moon of Jupiter, Callisto, has an orbital period of about 17 days. So you would need multiple nights observation to see it clearly changing position relative to Jupiter. Let me demonstrate. Let me center on Jupiter again. And I'm going to use the time control to uh, freeze the time and advance it by one whole day. It, so each uh, snapshot will represent positions of the moon and the Jupiter um, on different nights. So this is the August 9th, 10th, 11th. 12th, 13th, and 14th. So I think this is Callisto. I think we covered about a quarter of the orbit of Callisto. So that's uh, what I want you to demonstrate in this video and maybe show how your observation can be affected by different types of telescope mounts. If you are wanting to take stunning astronomical photos that require long exposure, you typically need equatorial mount to keep the picture steady. Thank you for watching. Bye.